Hello. Hello, Robert speaking. Hello. Jeff, yeah. Hello, Hello, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we will be disturbed in a few minutes' time. I'm afraid um, s- some inspector is coming to my flat, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Um, but um, I can certainly uh, talk until they come, and maybe we could also talk after it. Yep. Um, I'm curious about your book, Enjoy Life Forever. Yeah. A very interesting book. Um, The summary on page 228, the summary to lesson 54, says the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave appointed by Christ. It gives direction and spiritual food to Christians earthwide. And I'm thinking, well, the phrase spiritual food is only used once in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, and it's used of manna from heaven. It's physical food. The word spiritual is plumaticos. It means to be spirit-dominated or under spiritual control. And here, of course, the manna is called spiritual food, not because it's food made out of spirit, but it's food that's provided by God. So yeah. it's under spiritual what, what control. What was that verse again? Sorry, First Corinthians. Uh, yeah, First Corinthians chapter ten, verse three. Ten three. Okay. Um, yeah. It says from verse one, our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. Yeah. One Corinthians ten two, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and verse three, all ate the same spiritual food. So. Yeah. There's only one instance in the Bible of spiritual food, and it's, uh, as I understand it, it's 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 food, it's physical food. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that the only problem you had going through the book? Um. Well, that's one of the one of the things. Um, yeah. But, but I mean. Your book says the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave appointed by Christ. It, that yeah. means the governing body, gives direction and spiritual food to Christians earthwide. Well, no, they don't. The governing body doesn't give people manna from heaven that was provided by God, not by your eight man governing body. Yeah, yeah. So you have an issue over the, or you have some concerns about the, govern, the governing body, the role of the governing body as well. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. I, I, you know, I've read your yeah. book, but I don't subscribe to your views. I'd want to see yeah. some proof. Okay, so, um, proof of, first of all, I suppose, the governing body, yeah? Um, I, I'm dyslexic. I deal with one thing at a time. The first thing is spiritual food. Let's deal with that. Okay. When we finish yeah. with that, we don't go back to it. We move on to something else. Okay. We don't go in a big circle where every ten minutes we're sort of changing the topic and we no. we end up, you know, we end up every half an hour back at where we started. Um, yeah. Spiritual food, your book is saying on page 228 that the governing body gives direction and spiritual food to Christians earthwide. Yeah, where is, where that, does the yeah, Bible that say yeah. that? So I didn't catch that. Where does the Bible say that? That the governing body gives spiritual food. Yes, to Christians earthwide. Yeah. Um, that's um, tape. I think that thought is taken from Matthew 24. It doesn't say spiritual food. No, it says food. Well, it, it's got nothing to do with... It's just a. It's just a. It's just a question. It's not a statement of fact. Um, all right, I'll read it. Verse forty-five. Um, notice at the end of verse forty-five, there's a question mark. It's not a. It's not some appointment. It's a question. Yeah. And it's done in response to what Jesus says earlier about his second coming and the destruction of the temple. He he gives us warnings about the destruction of the temple and of the second coming and the sign of both and then he says um, 
verse 40, two men will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. So he's giving a warning, be attentive. Mm. Yeah. Right, to, to what he's told us about his second coming and the destruction of the temple. Verse 41, yeah. two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, the other left. Again, this is just a warning, which is what verse 42 says. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Then in verse 45, he simply repeats this warning. All this is, is just a warning. He's asking a question. He's telling a story, a little parable, as a warning. He's not telling us there's going to be some appointment in the year 1919 anymore. I mean, many other groups believe that they've been appointed by God as his sole representative on earth. The Mormons claim that God chose them in the 1830s. The Christadelphians claim God chose them in the 1860s. The Seventh-day Adventists claim God chose them in the 1850s. There's dozens and dozens of groups who apply verses like this to themselves, but they're just reading themselves into the Bible. So when you come to verse 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, he will make him ruler over all his goods. Notice that's after the master's return. And Christ's second coming hasn't happened yet. Then verse 48, the contrast. But if that evil servant, ah, so this is a contrast, just like the other little parables we, we found out in verse 40 and 41, about the two men and the two women, This is also a parable with a contrast. You have a faithful servant in verse 45, an evil servant in verse 48. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him at an hour when he is not aware of him and will cut him in two and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So clearly it's a contrast between a a true servant and a false servant, and it applies to any Christian who reads Matthew 24 and heeds the word, that person is a faithful servant who's going to be appointed as a ruler in Christ's kingdom at Christ's second coming, which hasn't happened yet. And then you have the evil servants who are going to ignore what Jesus has said is in, in this warning. That's all it is. There's, there's, there's no appointment of some divine office like, like the papacy or the head of the Mormon Church, or the heaven, or the head of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Yeah. So, do you subscribe to any particular um, religion? Well, I've just said something, and you've completely ignored everything that I've said. I don't go to church anymore. I used to be an evangelical oh, okay. Christian. I was baptized oh, okay. in the Pentecostal Church. I now no longer have anything to do with it. But yeah. you've ignored everything I've said. I mean, it's difficult to have a conversation when you make a statement and the person ignores that and just moves on to something else. Yeah. I just get the feeling I'm not going to convince you or be able to, you know, uh, give you an answer to your question about spiritual food and the governing body. Well, no, you're not, unless you can open your Bible and show me from the Bible. Yeah. where it says there was going to be an appointment of a governing body in the year 1919. If you can show me that yeah. from the Bible, I will, I will obey the Bible, if you can show yeah. it to me from the Bible. Yeah. But it's perfectly reasonable of me, isn't it, to say, prove it to me from the oh, Bible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I mean, there are two servants. There's a faithful servant in Matthew 24, 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant. This is a parable. But there's an evil servant in verse 48, well, how do I know which is a faithful servant and which is a, an evil servant out of the papacy, the head of the Mormon church, the head of the yeah. Christadelphians, the head of the Seventh-day Adventists, and the Jehovah's Witness governing body? I mean, how do I determine which is a true servant and which is a faithful servant, if this is a, supposed to be applied to them, which I don't believe it is? Okay. Yeah, I mean... Um Obviously, you you um, you've been through at least most of the publica- this pub- publication. Yes. And um, obviously, if if uh, this this is just one of the issues you had with it, then perhaps um, it would be better to leave it and let you continue on your um, study of the Bible. 
That's rather just, it, that's rather weak, don't you think? I mean, doesn't the Bible? Weak or meek? <laughs> it's 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 weak. The yeah. Bible says in one Peter chapter three verse fifteen that the man of God is supposed to give an answer for the yeah. hope that he has in him. But sanctify yeah. the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defence to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I'm yeah. asking you, what is your hope? My hope is to live forever on the earth. Well, I, I believe that. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. Look at the difference between us. You just talk and you make statements, but I give a Bible verse. Revelation yeah. 5.10 says, They shall reign upon the earth. And the word upon is, is epi. The preposition epi, which means upon or on in the Greek. There's also a parallel in Psalm 37. So I, I, I agree. Um, the ultimate destination after Christ's return to this earth will be to live with Christ upon this earth. Mm. Could I ask a different topic? Um, maybe it might be possible if, if I tell you the topic, maybe you might be to do a little bit of research. Before yeah, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do yeah. some research on spiritual food and the government. No, before you as well. no, 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 no. I, I think it's best to leave that because okay. otherwise you will get you will. When we speak again on that, you'll say I need to do more research and get back to you. So then you want to discuss it for the third time. When we yeah. discuss it for the third time, you say I still need to do more research. I'll get back to you. So we do it for the fourth time. I prefer to look at things once. Um, chapter fifteen is very interesting. Who is who is Jesus? Oh, okay, yeah. And on page 63, paragraph 3, it says Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. Yeah. Now, the Christian church that I attended claimed that Jesus rose in the same body that he died in. Yep. Yeah. So, is it possible to look at that? Could you, could you prove to me that Jesus rose as a spirit? I thought that the tomb was empty and the stone was rolled away from the door of the tomb because he rose up in the same body that he died in. That's why the stone was rolled away. I mean, why yeah. bother rolling the stone away if he rose as a spirit and could have just floated through the stone? Yeah, the, um, the, the, the um, disappearance of Jesus' fleshly body was um, to indicate that he was no longer lying in that tomb but had been resurrected as a spirit. But again, I can do some research yes. on that for you. Okay, okay, that, that'd be absolutely great. I can speak any day except for Monday. Um, uh, I, uh, maybe we can sort Zoom out the next time. Yeah. Um, um, thank you very much. Just give me notice via text of the exact time you want to speak. That would be great. Okay, thank you so great. much. Um, would, uh, would it be better if we... We're able to meet face to face, or is that something you'd rather not do at the moment? No, no, I, I, um, I don't attend religious meetings. I used to be an evangelical Christian, yeah, and I was no, very I'm badly happy, happy to visit you. If, do you live in Stevenage? No, I'm some way to the south of you. Oh, okay. Um, but I mean, if you impress me that you know what you're talking about, then I'd be asking you if you could visit me. Okay. But I've That's spoken great. to so, yeah. Okay. I'll get back to you on the point about Jesus being raised as a spirit, yeah? Yeah, no texts, no links. I don't want you to do any texting, you know, discussion yep. via text. I'm Stand. happy to talk on the phone or to talk on Zoom. That's absolutely okay. great. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. But give Thank me you notice for, your time. But give me notice via text, please. Yeah, Thank will you. do. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Stephen Inch North.